My name is Baljeet, welcome to my channel where you do as I say and not as I do. So we're gonna continue working on the i35. This is probably gonna be the last video I put out for this car. I know there's three videos I already did that. The VSS sensors that uh, I changed in the last video did not fix the issues that I'm having with the ABS traction control as well as the speedometer not working so in this video I'm gonna try to get uh, the those issues uh, fixed the ABS uh, light the traction control light as well as get that uh, speedometer working again so at least we can get this car smog uh, as well as we'll replace the window regulator that's an easy fix and then we'll go from there and see uh, so let's get to it uh, I already changed the two speed sensors that are on the transmission and I already changed both of the front ABS sensors and the only thing that I can uh, that is left as far as uh, speed sensors or ABS sensors on this car are the rear um, sensors so I got those just in the mail uh, finally so I'm gonna go ahead and change them out and see if the ABS traction lights um, uh, clear out with that they are they do go in and out so I don't know I did order a better scan tool uh, which should be coming like sometime maybe later this week or in a few days so if this doesn't solve my problem then I'll be able to use that other scan tool uh, you guys have probably heard of it Carly I ordered a my Carly scan tool um, I heard a lot of good things about it and it can tell you specific information on what the problem is so uh, hopefully this uh, solves it and then uh, if it doesn't then we'll have that scan tool and then we can take a look and see um, which sensor it is or where the issue is I still have the low oil pressure sensor I mean the low oil pressure light that comes on once the car uh, gets warmed up uh, I have been researching that issue for a while now and I can't seem to figure it out. The only thing that I can think of is I'm going to take the, since the car was hit, a hit on the bottom somewhere where the oil pan is, the oil pan was uh, um, replaced uh, from the previous owner. Um, so maybe the pickup tube for the oil pump is bent or has debris in it or something. But the only weird thing is it only the only oil uh, low oil pressure light comes on when the car gets hot. Uh, so the only thing I can think of why the car would do that, and I'm not sure, uh, or just like my opinion is or my thought process is, the engine is heating up and then the seals are expanding and then there's not enough. Uh, um, and there's the, the seals are not sealing properly when they get expanded and then that's why there's a low oil pressure light at idle so that might that problem might be solved by maybe just putting some additives in the engine uh, that's what I'm gonna do uh, so I'm gonna take off the pan look at the oil uh, pickup tube and see if it is damaged or whatever maybe I'll take if it does not damage if I can't see that is damaged then I'll just probably take it off clean it up and then uh, reinstall it and then uh, if that doesn't solve my problem then I'm probably gonna uh, or, or if I don't see anything that, that the tube was uh, damaged or anything like that then I'll probably uh, when I put the oil back in the car I'll add some additives the stuff that I've used been using all uh, since I was like uh, driving cars and like you know changing my own oils is if I have a car that has like over 150,000 miles uh, and it's new to me I usually put this stuff called restore 4 they come in two sizes like uh, a small for four cylinder and like a big one for like six cylinder or bigger so I'll probably add a can of that into the engine I'll probably just do that just in case uh, and then that's supposed to like help with like sealing and like you know filling up any gouges or anything like that and I've been I, I've, in during my research for like why the low oil pressure light I I did see some people putting thicker oil like half and half like you know a little bit like half uh, of like like I think it's like 5w30 in this car and then they put a little bit thicker oil with that so um, 
maybe it's like a common problem with these cars otherwise the car drives fine uh, engine runs very smooth I don't hear any issues with it I had let it run for a super long time uh, past like you know I drove it around uh, about like couple of miles after it got operating temperature and then I drove it back and uh, when I came back I couldn't hear anything I revved it to see like you know I was like like whatever I'm just gonna rev it if engine blows it blows let's just see and I revved it uh, many many times um, and, and the engine runs smooth i don't see and i don't hear anything so i'm not sure what the problem is or why i have the low oil pressure light because i already changed the oil pressure sensor on this car but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and get these sensors changed out and actually at, at least <laughs> see if one of my problems get resolved and then go from there
I was able to solve the ABS issue that it was having. So things that I have did was I first I changed out all the ABS sensor that didn't solve my problem. Then I changed the two vehicle speed sensors that were on the transmission and that didn't solve my problem. And um, so then I started doing some research on the forms and also like you know on Facebook groups and stuff like that and some googling so i one of the issues that people were saying that has to do with the abs on these cars is the abs module so a brand new module on this car is about fourteen hundred dollars and you have to get it from a dealership and um i don't think they even make that anymore so I have two options either i can buy uh, a used one from a wrecking yard or from eBay or the second option which I chose is uh, there are people on eBay or on just like if you google uh, them um, what they do is they rebuild modules and uh, uh, your computers in your cars and stuff like that so what uh, so I'll leave a link for the people I use these people are in Southern California, so I'm in Northern California, so I shipped, I took off the ABAS module and I shipped it to them and it took them like a few days to receive it. Then they fixed it right away and made the repairs and they sent it back to me and I got it like, with, it was a whole process, took like a week from me shipping it to them and me receiving it back. And the cost of doing something like that is around like 100 to $150, depending on what you're doing and I have used these kind of services in the past I had a e36 m3 that I was working on and it, it wasn't starting and so, so some of the research I done I suggested that it's the EWS preventing it so you can take the car to the dealership and they can like reprogram it and it can cost you a lot of money and the issue can come up again so a lot of people what they do is they just delete the EWS off of the car which is basically like an immobilizer like just in case if your car gets stolen or, or whatnot. So what I did is I found this guy and I took out my computer and I sent it to him and he charged me like a hundred dollars and then he deleted the EWS and I could have had him put um, he, I could have him reprogrammed the computer for to put like a cold air intake or a free flow exhaust or no cat or things like that. You know, they can program it. They only charge you one time fee and you can have them do as many things as you want. But since I, I do live in California, so like, you know, and then, you know, if you program these things and then it, then it becomes hard to smog your car when it comes time to. But EWS is not going to cause that problem. That has nothing to do with emissions. But anyways, let me show you guys the part where I took off and sent out and, you know, solved my problem. The ABS lights are gone the speedometer is working I only have one issue but let me show you the part and then we'll talk about what I'm gonna be doing today so if you can see down there there's this box right here so all the lines from the brake boosters are going into the ABS pump so ABS pump and the ABS module are usually together so this is the um, air box so I just took off all these screws they're like 10 millimeter screws and I disconnected the from the throttle body and this is the mass airflow sensor you just disconnect the mass airflow sensor um, and then you know this whole unit came out and then I had a lot of room to work around here so there's like a uh, torque bits that I had to use to remove there was like six uh, screws there was like one here and then you know there was like six of them and I took that off and the unit and I unplugged the harness the unit came off and I sent it in like I said and then it came back and um, I don't have that issue so so the issue that I am having right now is I'm still um, having a low oil light low oil pressure light come on once the car gets to operating temperature so I did buy let me show you this. so uh, as you know that the oil pan was uh, hit on the bottom when I bought this car uh, and then so there was some damage in that area that the previous owner told me so I didn't pay attention uh, because I didn't think of anything I thought maybe oh you know uh, once I fix this and everything um, maybe uh, I do an oil change and the light will just go away the car seems pretty clean to me so it didn't you know doesn't look like and it's a low mileage car that it will have like internal problems like 
that because that is a pretty major problem to have a low uh, oil light um, so I uh, here's what I think is this is very uh, this is called an oil pickup tube and it's in your oil pan and it picks up the oil so my uh, if this this could have gotten damaged when the car was uh, hit on the bottom whatever they hit and then maybe it's bent or broken or something like that and uh, my theory is that when the car gets uh, operating temperature all the oil is now circulating through the engine so this pan is very small pan for this 3.5 liter uh, motor I mean I know it has two pans a lower pan and a upper pan so I'm talking about the lower pan the lower pan is very small and that's where this part sits in the lower pan so my um, um, what I think is uh, on the lower pan when the car gets to operating temperature all the oil is circulating through the engine and there is not enough oil in the pan and this being restricted or bent or not working properly is not picking up enough oil um, and causing that low oil pressure light uh, down there this does not fix my low oil light I might end up just selling it uh, just to get rid of it and um, and because I do have a couple of offers one is from CarMax uh, and then another one is from a private party follow me on Instagram at the fixing agent and you can DM me there and ask me questions I know on um, um, YouTube you cannot just ask me like directly it has to go into a public comment section so if you if you have a question that you want to ask me like one-on-one -on -one and you know you don't want it to be like public uh, I'll be happy to just shoot me a, a DM on um, my Instagram which is the fixing agent so let me get going and um, replace this I already did an oil change so what I'm trying to do is I'll probably just clean up uh, one of those oil pans that I have and drain the oil in there and then once I change this and put that oil back in because I do have a fresh filter on it so if there is anything that filter will catch it or whatnot uh, the oil is brand new I haven't even driven the car maybe maybe 20 miles or something like that so uh, We'll see, we'll see. Uh, I do have new oil, but you know, um, I use full synthetic oil, which is quite expensive. Uh, anyways, I have my daughter here, and she's trying to like fix the car. <laughs> I don't know if you can see her. She's like, uh, she got her um, tool set. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I bought her like a. Show her. She wanna show your tools. This is my tool to find stuff. Yeah. So show us your tools. Which ones do you have? I have pincher, a screwdriver, measuring tape, screws. Wow, you're ready. And wrench and wire. Hammer. Hammer. Dog. Oh wow, that you're ready to go. You're gonna help that out. And safety goggles. Wow, that's and good. Handle. Wow, well, yeah, so you don't get hurt. Good job, boo boo. It's time to fix one of the issues that this car has is this window doesn't roll down. All the other windows, they roll down, even the sunroof works. But this window doesn't roll down and when I press the button, I don't hear anything. So since all the other switches work, I highly doubt this switch is bad and with the mileage and the condition if the switch was bad or overused this lettering would be gone but as you can see but as you can see the lettering is still there and it's not worn so I highly doubt I was researching online and trying to see you know uh, what are the issues and most people are replacing the motors the regulator motor on these cars so that's what I did I ordered from Amazon I believe it's right there in that box right there um, I'm not sure how much it was. I'll, I'll link uh, in the description. I'll leave a link for all the items, all the sensors, everything that I have bought uh, on in the description in this video below. I believe it wasn't that much. I think it was like either thirty or forty dollars. Not not that expensive. And then I bought the one that had the regulator and the motor together. So you know, make my life a little bit easier. But you can just buy the motor and uh, take the regulator and the motor out and then replace it I just um, the price wasn't worth it for me to be doing that and um, so anyway so 
I'm gonna go ahead and remove this panel. There's only like a there's a, there's a bolt here and a Phillips screw right there. I'm gonna I have already undone those, so I'm gonna pop this panel off, um, door panel off, and see what's going on under there. Hey, hopefully I get lucky. Maybe it's just disconnected or something like that. I, I, you never know these things, but I already have the window regulator with the motor on. So we'll just see. And anyways, all right, quick update for you guys. You get to see the door panel. Something really interesting. <laughs> this car has definitely been messed around with, trying to fix it and somebody gave up or I don't know what's going on with this car I mean um, mechanically it drives pretty good I drove it around but the issues and that I'm finding are like really really weird just like the oil cooler or the uh, oil filter housing uh, o-ring was wrong I think it was wrong and it, it was leaking and then you know oil pan was just put on there with RTV no gasket and uh, the same thing with this <laughs> window there is no window regulator I was wondering what this gray plug is for and I looked on the on the switch and on the other stuff and I couldn't figure it out because it was unplugged and it kind of was like a red flag I was like why I, mean, I thought I got lucky I thought that I got lucky well, let me turn this around I thought I got lucky that like oh my god only thing that's wrong is somebody forgot to uh, uh, plug this uh, connector into the door and maybe they were working on it and that's why the window is not working I was so excited and all that just went down the drain my excitement was over in a minute once I found out and it got worse I'm gonna show you guys so I don't know if it's worse or not but this whole window is held up by this bolt that's the only thing that's holding this window up and that's why it's like loose and whatever and there is no window regulator the window regulator is missing and no motor or nothing like that so good thing I bought the window regulator with the motor so that way I have everything I just I just wish that it comes with bolts but i do have bolts uh, i can figure that one out that's not a big deal uh but yeah there is no window regulator in here there's no window regulator there is no motor then this window is being held up by this bolt right here that like right there this this one so i'm gonna get going and uh put my window regulator in and hopefully that will fix my problem or i mean and the window will start working like when I opened it, uh, there's usually like a plastic vapor barrier that goes around like this. Um, that was missing, so that was also like, I was like, whoa, look, somebody's been in here working on this. So anyways, let me get uh, working on this and I'll uh, give you guys an update pretty soon on uh, if there's anything else weird uh, I find. So all right guys this is going to be a wrap on this car uh, this car is being picked up in an hour so just to recap i got this car for fifteen hundred dollars and i put about two hundred dollars uh, in parts in this car and uh the guys uh we agreed on a price of two thousand dollars for this car planned on making a lot of profit on this car and sell it for about four four thousand forty five hundred but this car has an issue that i can't figure out or i don't want to put my time in it and uh, it's like a low oil light so it could be as simple as changing the oil pump which is still not a simple job you still have to pretty much take off like the whole bottom end of the car or it could be worn out uh, bearings because oil pressure is created with the rod bearings so that could be the issue rod bearings will be the worst case scenario oil pump not so much so i was up front with the buyer he's actually did some work on my wife's car for me and he was here so i told him i'm trying to sell this car this car is smog and i do have the title so that that is something positive going on for this car 
as well as it runs and drives it runs and drives fine i drove it on the freeway i drove it around the streets it's it's a good running car but at, it does have a low oil light at around idle so once you give it some gas so oil pressure builds up and the light goes away but anyways um i have another um something that i want to share with you guys is this is probably going to be my last uh flip for my road to my c8 corvette for a while so when you get into a rhythm you know you just keep buying cars fixing them selling them so i was i was going on so this is like my fourth or fifth flip that i did in the last i would say six months another thing was that uh by now this is end of 2021 i thought the prices for the 2020 c8 corvettes would come down and i would be able to buy one um for about 50 to 40 thousand dollars and as we all know that is not the case so that is another reason the prices hasn't dropped and they are holding around hundred thousand dollars and that's not something even with flipping cars i don't want to spend that kind of money on a on a, a used corvette or a corvette that uh, you know matters and because i'm just looking for a one lt nothing special or, or whatever so so what my plan is for this series is i'm gonna put it on pause just wanted to give you guys a little recap of where i stand with this um, series my road to my c8 corvette at the moment i have about seven thousand five hundred dollars uh, in cash from the sales of the flips as well as uh, i bought the 99 eclipse with that money as well as the 1971 cadillac coupe so i have seven thousand five hundred dollars in cash and two cars and another reason that i'm stopping this is this car um um it kind of uh, um, wasn't selling uh, actually that was another reason I put it up for sale it's been on, on sale for like two weeks or maybe uh, things are changing it is um, uh, 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 early uh, November so I put this car in sale for like mid October so that's when all these like the stimulus and then the forbearance programs all these like uh, government programs had ended during that time and that could have been a reason people didn't have the extra money to spend on a used car so there was like a, a time frame where I wasn't even getting offers I wasn't even getting low ball offers so I am gonna wait and see what happens next year if the market picks up again um, I'll give it a, a little uh, um, a little trial I'll buy like a car and see and fix it and sell it and see if it picks back up again then I'll continue to do it but definitely once I buy my uh, or once I get my C8 Corvette that's when I plan on continuing with this uh, series and uh, pay off that car whatever the remaining balances uh, until then I hope you guys enjoy me working on the Eclipse and as well as on the uh, Cadillac Coupe so that is my game plan and those are the reasons that why I'm putting a pause on this video series other than that I hope you guys uh, like this video if you do please uh, smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel also share this video with anybody that would like this kind of a content and uh, look forward to my other videos coming out uh, on my 99 Eclipse that I'm turning it into a Fast and the Furious Eclipse. I'm still doing that. Hopefully, uh, you know, I can get that car running so I can move on forward with that project. And I'm also still waiting on some paperwork for the Cadillac Coupe before I can start working on that car. So um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Other than that, I uh, hope you guys make it a fantastic day.